Hello and welcome back to another episode. Right now we're in Diamond City. I'm gonna help out Nick in finding whatever he needs to find for his cases around Diamond City. Alright, here we go. Where am I going anyway? I don't even know. Over here, gotcha. Alright, I've gotta go around. I can do that. Right in here then. Dug out in. We'll have a little chat. And find out what is going on. You are all better than these folks. You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no. I kid. I kid. <laughs> he is dead, though. <laughs> now, let me know when you're ready to order. Earl Sterling used to work here, right? Poor Earl. Gone just like that. Such a good bartender. Good friend. Oh, <laughs> Terrible with women, mind you. Bull in China shop with them. You with Valentine's Detective Agency? I forgot to drop off Earl's key when I hired you people. Here, I hope you find out what happened. Security does nothing but yell at me for asking about. Now, let me pour you a drink. Come on. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers had a place to safely pass out after drinking. <laughs> I don't need anything. Ah, come on. Now I'm good to go, buddy. I wonder if we can find a job here. Might be able to. Hello, Skyland. Miss? Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. Did you work with Earl Sterling at all? Oh, yeah, Earl. Ugh. I mean, I know I shouldn't speak ill of the missing, but that guy needed to get out. You'd think a bartender would be yeah, smooth, you know? Charming? Not Earl. He tried so hard, too. Way too hard. The real sad thing? He thought it was his looks kept talking about getting a new face over at the mega surgery wouldn't have helped i should get back to work plenty of food and drinks available who owns this bar anyway the bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago uh vadim bobrov is the loud one yafim bobrov is the quiet one and i'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day maybe later at the bar if you change your mind Oh. Cheeky breaky. Someone missing. Oh. I'm gonna look around now, try to find what I can. What do we even have around here? Ooh, hold on. Will they find me? Uh, no, I'm hidden. I can do that. And hold on, we're golden. <laughs> nice. Nicky boy, it's all right, pal. Oh, they don't even have good things in here. I thought maybe they would have good things in here, but I was wrong about that. Let me chat around real quick. Hold on. Not you. Hello? Who do we have in here? Who do I kill? Who do I shoot, huh? No one in here? Gotcha. I mean, what a big location they own. Not bad. Not bad. Room number three over here. Shiny, but not what we need right now. What about in here? Nope. Who are you? Need a room? Did you know Earl Sterling? One of my brother's old friends. <laughs> what? The way those two would go on about girls, you'd think Vadim is loud now. Earl was a horrible womanizer, and I warned him more than once to leave the staff and customers alone. But my brother always stood up for him. Honestly, I'm kind of glad he's gone. He wouldn't shut up about the new face he was going to get at the mega surgery center. Vain till the end. Anyway, did you want a room? Maybe later. All right. Yeah, no, I'm good. Do we have any more around here? Not good in the resident. Hello, Nicky boy. 
another one over here. Alright, we're going back out. Then we'll go to his home and find out what happened to him. I'm assuming that maybe his face was changed, altered by surgery. And that is what he's doing now. Being a new man. Probably. Alright, in we go. I've got a lot of work to find out about. Start in here. Why don't you check out the living room? Must be some hint where that boy ran off to. You know, for all the talk, I'd put the chances of this being an institute snatch job somewhere between zero and none. Earl Sterling, local assistant bartender. Why not nab the bartender himself? Lord knows the team sampled his own wares enough that some weird behavior wouldn't make anyone bat an eyelash. Alright. Looking around. No problem. Let me go up here. And Earl had lousy people skills. Might score the institute some points in the last person you'd ever suspect category. Why not snatch someone with charm? Someone who could get you what you want. Earl. Barely get you a drink by closing on a busy night. So where's that leave us? No known enemies. Wasn't much for the great outdoors, so likely not raiders or mutants. Now this all screams accident. Now, what was Earl into that might have gotten him in this kind of trouble? I can't find anything here. Hello. Thank you, boy. Oh. Hey, come here. I think I found something. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Valentine. Hey, come take a look at this. Uh, any chance you got a second now? Oh, over here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dr. Crocker. Cool. Hold on, we need to chat. Of course, Nick. What's up? I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but, uh... Well, I know I can trust you at this point. For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these, uh, Flashes. Memories of places I've never been. Things I've never seen. Memories of Nick's. They're not bad, they're just, uh, They're just this inescapable reminder... That I'm not the person I think I am. That I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine. Pretending to be human. Hmm. You think. You feel. You're more than pretending, Nick. Yeah, nice of you to say, but your kind don't usually have to deal with someone else's whole life trapped inside their skulls. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con. Or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but... My entire life I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am. My judgment, my speech, hell, even my name. They're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. Oh man. That is killing me. Is there any way we could separate you and Nick? Don't think I haven't tried. Lost near a month of my life last time I mustered up the courage to let someone play brain surgeon on me. No. This is how it's gonna be. Living with another man's name. Another man's life. <sighs> You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home, friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I... I'm just gonna need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're... you're a real good friend. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, 
nuclear guy Nick. You know, I don't even know where to begin about that. Valentine history I've been hoping to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. What kind of history are we talking here? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people, but he knew the end was coming. So he sealed himself inside a personal shelter located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. There's more to this, isn't there? The story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. You don't mean to tell me he used that radiation to... That's right. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul. 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. And ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him. So that never happens. You in? I don't get it, Nick. Why kill Eddie Winter, even if he is still alive? This sounds like some kind of vendetta. No, I've got memories of the, the girl. My girl. They're not really my memories, I know that. They're Nick's. But the girl, she was real. She was beautiful and innocent. And Winter killed her. Now he's got to pay the price. So, knowing that, are you in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. You're a good man. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, including one of Winter's that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. On my way out the door, I spotted an active evidence terminal. I'll bet my hat that terminal is the key to finding the rest of the tapes. Probably worth revisiting any police departments you may have stumbled across in your travels as well. We can do that later, my pal. I'll do it for you, Nick. Again, I don't even know where to begin for him. He truly is, you know, who he is due to a man that was alive over 200 years ago. Would he even begin for that? I have no idea. Hey, I think those Bull bro brothers are looking for you. Are they? Well, I'm busy right now. Hold on. Hey, Doc. This better be an emergency. Do you know anything about this receipt? Let me see. Hmm. This is Dr. Crocker's deplorable handwriting, all right. Looks like Earl Sterling was one of his patients. The procedure noted here is mundane. Low-risk cosmetic work. Dr. Crocker never performed it, however. Said Earl vanished before he paid. Now, I must insist we talk about your medical needs. Where is Doc Crocker? Last time I saw him, he had to get something out of the surgery cellar. Probably just had to wash some needles or move some storage around. Now, let's get back to talking about your medical needs. I need to get into the cellar, Doctor. What does this look like? A public outhouse? You know what? Don't answer. Why on earth would I let you down there? I'm investigating a missing person, Doctor. And I think the trail leads to your basement. A missing person? You're talking about Earl, aren't you? You can't honestly think... 
You know what? Fine. If it'll put the matter to rest. Here, go see for yourself. But if I find one instrument out of place, you'll be getting the bill. Yeah, I know, pal. It all begins. Where blood come from? It goes right into the basement. All right, here we go then. You've really oh shit! Been a handful, you know. But I think we're just about done. Our little mistake Looks is like finally going to be funeral. corrected. Oh, naughty, naughty! You're not supposed to be down here, but that's okay. I can fix that. I can fix anything. What did you do to Earl Sterling, Doctor? What did I do? I didn't do anything. It was, uh, it was Earl. It was Earl who didn't want to be happy. Good patients get a nice new face. Bad patients bleed all over the floor because they want to screw up their surgeon's life. You made a mistake, but you can still do the right thing, Doctor. Just think this through. Drop the weapon, Doc. Haven't enough people suffered today? You're... You're right. There's one thing I can do. Only one thing is going to make this all better. I can fix anything. Oh, shit. Well, all right. That is one What's way to go. On? You don't need that. Bye, that Errol. Bye, Doc Crocker. I think you owe me an explanation. What happened here? Doc Crocker killed Earl Sterling. I found out, and then he killed himself. Guess he couldn't handle the guilt. Dr. Crocker killed Earl? The, the facial reconstruction. So he really did go through with it. That explains a lot more than I'm comfortable with. Dr. Crocker always cared about his reputation, but this, this is inhuman. What are you going to do now, Doctor? Now? Now, I have a report to file, a mess to clean up, and a lot of explanations to give to our patients. You should get going. A medical professional should be the one to handle all this... contamination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, let me head back up then. <laughs> what a crime. Who's gonna change my face when I need to be changed now? We can't blame ourselves. That man decided to die. Yeah, well, when we're back, we'll handle it. 